Okay. Well, welcome everybody to uh, to our webinar with um, Visor. As as I think anyone who's heard me talk knows, I'm a big fan. Uh, it has gotten me out of all of my insane Excel spreadsheets. Almost, I'm still waiting for that last little uh, killer app on Visor to happen, which is the um, the uh, historical cash flow. But I'm, I think that's coming. And, and then I will immediately delete all of my Excel files. I'm really excited about this. Oh, we have Latan Yahav from, from Visor here. He is the founder and, and CEO. And he is going to kind of walk us through some of the um, Visor, some of the features and, and some of the things that are, that are coming. And uh, this is going to be recorded. So if you're listening to it on a recording, um, you won't get to ask the questions, but hopefully we'll have lots of good questions from the people are, that are here. So Litan, I will uh, turn it over to you. And thank you. I know it's evening where you are. So thank you for uh, for being here. We appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, I, I love I love, I love talking with the community and with you, Jim, in particular. It's just so fun. I mean, so, any feedback that comes up from this call, I'm super open and happy to, to hear and, and write it down, maybe add it to our roadmap. Because um, we're building a product that we we use our own as as the co-founder, so it's me, my and Tomer, my co-founder. Um, so we built it for us initially, and we just so we began like a few years ago to offer it to other people like us, and just scaled from that. So um, we're building it so that people like us get more value. So that's just a, a quick background, and and it is evolving on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you guys in walk you guys through sort of the the recent version and there's one coming out next week hopefully uh what which has some more additions it doesn't have that cash flow yet but it has some really really amazing sort of uh improvements to the whole loan section um sort of liabilities and projecting those moving forward especially in these like current times where you know leverage <laughs> has become a bad word and a year ago it was like like if you have a 2% mortgage, like you have an asset only on the mortgage, <laughs> forget the, the real estate property, right? And so, so loans is extremely important. We're adding that next week. Um, so I'll dive in. Feel free to stop me either on the chat, on mute, ask a question, like totally freestyle, okay? Does that make sense, Jim? All right, cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Sure, all right. So, all right, so this is sort of the... the uh, the main main screen of visor i mean you will probably reach sort of visor.co um and automatically when people sign up from like infielders uh there's automatically a discount applied uh, to your account um but regardless of that when you sign in when you sign up for the first time it's free you'll go through sort of this onboarding process and you'll see basically this screen with data in it which we call the demo account which you can then play around with delete stuff, add stuff, just play around with it on your own as much as you want. And when you decide you want to start using it for your own, then you'll begin a trial period, um, a 30 day free trial period, uh, which requires a credit card, just so that commitment, because we found that if you don't commit, you won't use it for real. And so we want to make sure you use it and get the value. And then if it really brings you value, then you'll, you'll stay on, which most people that join do. Um, and so <clears throat> that's sort of the overall uh, flow for joining. And then once you're in and you start adding stuff, the way things are added here, and we try to keep this as automated as possible because our objective as the founders here is to create, is to keep our passive investments as passive as possible. That's our objective, right? And so we want to create as much automation as possible within Visor. And that's sort of why we have these ability to sync in your investor portal. Um, if you're invested in these funds, we don't have all the, like most of the investor portals don't sync yet. We're, work, we're working on that, but essentially we're building towards syncing those investor portals that you receive as a limited partner in syndications. And the second way is just sync your bank account or brokerage account, which is pretty straightforward. 16,000 institutions where you can just sync them automatically to Visor. The third thing is something that we've like sort of, we've seen it to be extremely popular among our members is what we call the magic box. And essentially it's, it, it is what it sounds like. So this is this place where you just throw in all your financial documents your current spreadsheets for tracking your assets or your net worth today, um, any investment document, K1, uh, uh, quarterly statements, like anything, you just throw them in to the magic box and then we'll translate that into assets or update existing ones through what the information which is in those documents. Um, and another way is just to forward emails to the secure import link 
And then those, those emails or the information within those emails will automatically be sent into the magic box and translated again to data, um, assets, ex new assets or updating existing ones. Um, now this process is a hybrid process. Part of it is automated. Some documents can be automatically converted into assets and whatever can't goes through a manual process. And that's only after all the documents are anonymized. So all the personal information is, is blurred out. So no one has access to that. It's just the pure data that, that's inputted into the platform for you. As if it was your like personal financial concierge or what we call a virtual family office approach. Um, so that's the magic box. And then the fourth and most straightforward, just a manual process of adding stuff just manually into the platform. And then there's a flow and each, each flow has different attributes because each asset class has different important metrics. So that's sort of like how assets are added um, into it. Now, and like I said, also loans and stuff like that um, can also be added to Visor. Um, any questions on that before I move forward? All right. Um, so now let's dive into what happens after assets are thrown into the platform. You'll see your overall net worth, your total assets, liabilities, your cash position, your income, from the beginning of the year or total income for previous years. And then the breakdown of all of your assets per asset class or liabilities per loans. So that when I dive in, and I can also, it doesn't have to be this way. I can also filter out stuff. So show me all my, my holdings that are held through a specific holding entity or that are held through a specific institution or sponsor so that I can then break it down at every, any way I like. And there's also a way to generate a balance sheet so that we have reporting capabilities. So you can create a balance sheet per entity, per all your entities, whatever you need. We're also working on a personal financial statement generating tool. So you can then click a button, they'll generate a personal financial statement that you can zip, submit to a lender and then get a loan. Um, now, if I dive into the, the pure uh, reporting or visibility standpoint or aspect of Visor, I'll dive into, let's say, the real estate. You'll see your real estate holdings, total value of them. If you have any liabilities connected to your, to your real estate holdings, you'll see them here as well. And then your performance of your total real estate portfolio, how much you've contributed, how much you've received. And then per each asset, you'll basically see all the, the, the metrics that are relevant for those assets. And then I can, I can sort of change these, asset, these attributes. I can add different stuff. So I, I don't wanna see the holding entity. I wanna see, the whatever total community capital or or let's just see an asset type and then you'll see if, if you select it so this is multi-family but these weren't defined as one um all right and, and basically so that's the overview of, of of an asset class and all the data within that but then if i dive into a specific asset what happens here is i'll see like this specific investment which is worth three hundred thousand dollars which is my position in this investment all the historic cash flow distributions from this asset. And if there are things that are missing, meaning let's say when I, when I set this up through the magic box, I threw in the investment docs or a spreadsheet that I, that I used or that I received from the operator, the sponsor, or I just manually inputted the information, then I'll, this, this is built from that information. And then I also have the historic distributions, but also the future ones. And now because we link into your bank account, will automatically identify transactions that appear in your bank account and link them to specific investments. So you see here that in November, we identified a transaction in your bank account that is supposed to be linked to this monthly distribution. And so that automatically is connected and then you have your basically performance is, is always um, tracked and, and monitored for you. And then you, you have all your assumptions for this asset. Um, you can define sort of a holding entity, like which entity do I use to hold this? If it's a, a, a tribe that I've, that I've sort of uh, um, joined with other people and that's the name of the holding entity of the tribe. Um, if I have any expected commitments to this holding IRRs, anything, I, 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 all the important information for tracking and projecting this asset and all my documents are related to it. So, so that's on the asset level. Um, now, if I go back up, to the main screen. So again, we're back here at viewing my total net worth breakdown per asset class. Up here on the bot on the top left, 
there's a whole section that we call cash flow, which is another one of those sort of super popular areas within the platform. Because we're most of us are still in a wealth, like we're all in wealth creation mode. We want to make sure our cash is working or not. I want to make sure I have enough cash going into this downturn. We want to make sure that we have enough cash to take advantage of opportunities that come up. And so it really helps to sort of project forward what my cash flow is today, but how it will look in the future based on all my expectations for my different holdings. Right. So for example, let's say I, today I have an accumulated $61,000 of cash in multiple bank accounts. Let's see how that will look moving forward. So here in June, I'm supposed to have 362,000. And if I click that, then the left pan here will show me all the expectations. So these are tests, but all the different expectations in terms of cash flow for June of 23, including my W2 income, my household cost of living, and everything that's expected for that point in time in the future. So that I can look forward and see how much cash I'm going to be sitting on top of. And then sort of raising a flag, we'll raise a flag. So if there's a, a really big expected liquidation event or exit event, you want to be prepared to find a different alternative to reinvest that money that will come back to you. Because again, you don't want money sitting in the bank and getting zero, um, where at the moment actually you can get pretty, pretty nice interest rates in, in your savings or checking accounts. But usually you'd want to have that deployed and not sitting in your bank account. And now the cool aspect of this sort of view is not just seeing the static view of all my expectations for my different holdings, but also start to sort of manipulate it and add scenarios on top of it. So for example, let's say I want to buy a new home in June, how much, and, and it'll cost 450 grand, how will that affect my cash flow? And then I'll see basically, if this works, that I'm going to have a dip here for, I don't know, eight months, but then there's a sort of a, and if these are a few like events that are supposed to liquidate or provide cash and then put me back up into the, into the, into the, into the green or the black. Um, and it can help me make better decisions. Or if I, uh, I'm supposed to get 50,000 from a cash flowing deal, that's also helps me sort of understand, Oh, wait, I'm going to be in a better or worse situation. And so it just helps when you have multiple, multiple streams of revenue of income or multiple streams of expenses in terms of capital calls, this is really the place to help really understand how will all look together in the holistic overview of things? Jim, does that make sense or am I running too fast? Because I don't think anyone's going to, people here are too shy, I think, to ask questions. No, that that's great. I think what might be helpful also, because can, can you show how you can manually enter a syndication investment and kind of walk through it? Because I think that, I mean, I, that that's one of the things that I, I think is kind of eye-opening because how simple it, it, it is to get data in this thing. Right. Sure. Happy, happy to walk through the manual process. Although we always recommend, like, again, you, you want to keep be passive, right? So you, you can let us do all the work, but if you want to do the work on your own, you can just dive in here through real estate. Um, and then you can, it's either like a rental property that you own on your own, or it's a syndication or a group that you're invested through. And then you, essentially there are two different types of syndications overall, right? There's either, Something that has ongoing cash flow, which we define as a rental. It, it could be a storage unit, right? But something that cash flows, and there's something that doesn't really cash flow ongoing, but it has a, a future cash flow event, which is a development deal, like ground up development, stuff like that. So let's dive into rental syndication. And then here we can sort of choose the operator sponsor to say NAG. Um, and let's just say this is called, um, what do you want to call it? Let's just call it Santa Monica. Perfect. Even though they do triple net usually, let's just call that. And let's just say I invested $150,000 into this deal. And this started in January last year. And just, just so people can see, this is, um, this is one of the features that they added, I think mostly because of LFI was talking about, you know, Tribest is hundred percent owned by me. If you unclick that, um, then you can type in your ownership percentage and everything calculates from that. So I think that's, that's a really useful feature. And you can see the difference. You know, the whole thing is 150, but your ownership is only half of that. And so it allows you to type in the whole thing rather than getting out your calculator and just doing your share. So this was, this was an awesome addition that, uh, that they added. And one of the reasons, and again, I'm not trying to be a fanboy, but I can't stop myself. Um, one of the reasons why I really like Visor is because, you know, I sent them eight pages of notes and they implemented 
most everything, you know, and, and um, they do a really good job at that. So just wanted to state that, but this is how I enter things Laton. just so you know, I don't like the magic. I, I don't mind the magic box, but when I do a new investment, I want to, I want to have it right away. I don't want to wait, you know, the right. 24 hours or whatever. I'm, I'm too excited. So I do it this way. Cause it's so easy. It takes five minutes. All right, cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, and first of all, yes, we do really, like I, like I said, at the beginning specific, your feedback is always super helpful. And we try to iterate as fast as possible on implementing those, those aspects of the product. Um, and this has been really helpful for us as well. Cause like me and my co-founder, we've done the same thing, right? We just, you know, hacked it ourselves to, to, to modify the platform. So it, it would match us. And then when you pushed us to do this, it's like, well, holy shit, this is really valuable for us as well. And we also started to add our own stuff this way. Um, so yeah. And then if I just added 20% or let's say 25%, then from this moment on, um, anything I add to, we'll see if I move to the next screen. Now, usually when you invest into a syndication, right, there's supposed to be some sort of projection of cash flow. And let's just say, so if I put 150,000 in, let's just say it's supposed to generate, I don't know, whatever a year, let's just say $15,000 a year. Um, and so can I, can I cut in here too, because this is a really cool feature is um, if you if you know when your first distribution is coming, you can put it in and say it's it's March 2022 is when you're expecting it. And that way, when you get to the expected events, it won't expect anything from you until March. So it's really, really kind of a cool way um, to do it. And then yeah, if, and, if you and, think it's going to change, sorry, next year, you can add another scenario there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so then let's just, and this, let's do, this is from January. And so let's just say after that, it's supposed to be $20,000. Um, and then a year later, it's supposed to be whatever, 25. And that's until the end, right? And let's just say it's distributed every quarter, not every month. So that means I just set up a distribution schedule, which allows me to project forward what the cash flow is supposed to look like from this specific investment. Um, and then sometimes, this is pretty rare on syndications, but sometimes there are going to be some future expectations in terms of capital calls or future commitments. You can add in not the, not just the distribution schedule, but also the capital call schedule if there is any. I'll leave that blank for a second. Yep. And then and then these are like more things that you'll receive from the operator, sponsor, whatever. Like, all right, this is, I invested last year. So let's just say this is a six-year deal it's supposed to end January 27. And I expect 70% IRR and a 2.3 multiplier. And this is just like for me to remember. Um, because what, I, what happens with me and I invest in a lot of these deals, I forget. And so I want as much information as possible so that I can go back and check it out. Um, and if I want to input the address uh, and if there's an entity that I'm using to invest in this, I can just add uh, whatever, family trust. And that, that's one of the nice parts is, you know, I'm in 10 tribes, so I have a bunch of holding entities. And it, it's just, it, for me, it's, it's made it a lot easier to figure stuff out. And, and on the holding entity side, this is something we're also adding into our roadmap. If we're already talking about looking forward at the moment, the holding entity aspect is only sort of the entities and what is held under those entities. And we don't at the moment have any um, ability to add in who's on top of the entities, right? Who's behind each entity, which is something we also want to add in the roadmap because it's important to remember, right? This entity is held with these four or five people. This entity is with those 10 people or this is with like three family members or whatever. And, and so it's it, it, that what we've seen from, from talking with a lot of members is sort of that will be super helpful as well. And so we're gonna add that down the road. Um, and then the type of, of, of investment, let's just say this is uh, from like industrial. Um, and if I wanna add anything else. And then what happens when I click done, it basically builds that asset page um, and sort of shows me my history, so what happened in the past. And we, we assume, because we don't want people to work hard, we assume that er and everything that was supposed to happen in the past happened or occurred as planned. But you can also update it and change it while saying, I didn't receive this two, nine, 937, this was actually, I don't know, 400 bucks. Um, and so that'll update accordingly and I'll see my performance, the cash on cash return, the IRR expectation. Um, I think there's a bug here because this doesn't make any sense, but sort of that sort of things uh, uh, historically and then moving forward, all my expectations in the future. Now, the cool thing is when you link in a bank account, 
and Jim, I don't know if you've linked in bank accounts, but yeah, we'll automatically track and link transactions to the specific. So if we identify something in the in, in the area of 1250 that something in the transaction matches the definition of this investment, it might be the, the operator name or the asset name or anything sort of that we've identified that matches it. And then the platform will learn as we move forward, as you approve more events, more of those transactions. And then the recommendation algorithm will just improve and, and, and bring more value. Yeah, that's a really nice feature. Although, um, again, for me, I guess I'm not the normal user because I usually input stuff as soon as it hits my bank account. And, and so it takes a few extra hours to get to the uh, to, to cycle through Visor. But it is nice when you know, you're gone for a couple of weeks and you come back and you log in and all of your, um, you know, a lot of them are matched up correctly. And you just, that's what, you know, like I said, I really like the fact that you can go in here. Now you have this asset entered. It took five minutes to enter it. And now anytime I have a distribution, it either automatically uploads it or it enters it for me. And it lets me know if I'm missing something. So it just, it, it's now making it, you talk about passive, Tan, how you want everything to be passive. It takes 10 seconds uh, for me to enter in distributions when I get them. And when I'm dealing with my Excel documents, you know, there's always something I got to fix and move around. And so that, that's why I'm a big fan here. And if you can click on documents also, um, this is a nice feature where you can upload the PPM, you can upload any reports that you got. And I, am I right, Latan? if you get a report from uh, MAG, like one of the weekly reports, if you can just upload it to the magic box or email it and it will automatically go into this? Right. If you email it to the secure, like the magic box link, or if you've thrown it to the magic box, then it'll automatically appear there. Yeah, that's, uh, and that's it, great. And, and it will be analyzed if there's any information that's relevant to the investment. So they update all the information for you. And if things like go like, I don't know, sideways as you're invested with it, you can also update information moving forward. Um, and then we'll also remember sort of the historic aspects. So let's just say I change this now. Well, now it's going to be 15%. Um, then sort of we have the history of like what you ex what your expectations were for the IRR or the multipliers or the, all that type of stuff as well. Um, and so all of that then feeds into the cash flow that you were showing earlier, correct? So if right, you're so if I head up to the cash flow, um, and let's turn off this because I want to see the red. Um, and let's say March, we said Santa Monica. I think let's see here where that. Oh, there it is. I see it. There we go. So, so here's sort of like this distribution that I expect to receive from Santa Monica, and it's 25% of what the total amount should be. Um, and so it sort of helps me, again, no, I don't have to remember anything. It's all here for me. That, that for us was super valuable um, in terms of like cash flow tracking and projection. Now, uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of like really cool things we're building out. Um, the historical cash flow is, is one of those things in our roadmap for sure. Um, the loans, which will be better projected forward from a cash flow and net worth pr perspective. But one of the coolest features we think will be the, the uh, benchmarking side of it. So if you can imagine, and this is still, this is a prototype. Um, this is not sort of what it's going to look like. It's going to look a lot nicer, but Imagine this, you see like not just what you have, but you'll be able to see if I add in a layer of the community, what the community has. And, and Jim, I don't know if we spoke about this. We're also going to add the ability in this iteration for the benchmarking that for, for members to add in. If they're, if they're members of any other communities, they'll be able to see the allocation of people in their community anonymously, yeah. of course. And if people want to opt in or out of it, but but the idea is that you'll be able to sort of to share an honest information based on actual investments. And the cool but, thing isn't, sorry, go yes, ahead. I was just gonna say that that's really neat because what we're talking about is you'll be able to like, if, if a hundred people from LFI enter their data in here and opt to share their data anonymously, then if you're a left field investor, you can go in here and, and compare what they're doing to what you're doing. Right. And so you can see, 12 people from LFI invested in MAG Santa Monica or something like that. It just, it kind of validates what you're doing. Right. And, and it's not just on the level of sort of um, 
of a of the, the holistic asset location, but even more down, if I dive deeper, let's say into real estate, and let's just say there are 52,000 people in Vibes that invest in real estate, we'll basically show the funds, the operators, the sponsors that people in Visor have invested in, in real estate. Um, and how many people, we're not gonna show performance because performance is like a whole black box we're not opening up yet. But what you'll see how many people, how much money has been invested in each of those uh, financial products, as we call them, and just give really more transparency into the private markets, which is totally lacking. And like one of the things Jim, you're working really nicely on is sort of bringing that sort of private market to your community, which you're doing amazingly. Um, and this is sort of the complement that we think. So if I dive maybe into the Ashcar, for example, ideally, and I don't know if we're going to go down to this level in terms of the benchmarking we're launching next, like next month. But the idea would be to show also the assets you're going to people hold through Ashcraft and then create a whole dialogue that people can communicate be between each other based on this investment product. Anonymously, right? But based on actual investments and then sharing information uh, around that transparently. Um, and again, people do not have to interact with this. They will not have to share the information. We just think this is super, super valuable to, to, to the whole community. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And the more people that share the data, the, the obviously the the um the better the data becomes. So I'm I'm really excited about about this part of it. Yeah, I mean just to put things into context. So at the moment we have about 1.6 billion dollars tracked on the platform. Um, and so we already have enough information for overlapping of data. I I don't know if it's is it data or data? Like is that <laughs> Both. Um, I think we say both. I don't, I say data, I think, but there's people that say data. <laughs> Never thought of that. Probably depends <laughs> on where you, it's whether you're a pop or a soda guy, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So I'll try, I'll try to, to, to talk about data now. So yes, yeah, so we have enough data that should have given enough overlapping of information and, and bring value. Um, and, and so that's pretty cool that we've seen that, that we can, we can generate that. And we've also had uh, sort of operators, like sponsors and operator syndicators reach out to us and say, wait, holy shit, I want all my LPs to use Visor now because I want, I want my, my fund to have enough traction. I want people to know that there are 50 people that are invested in me and then they'll, they'll get more confidence to go and, 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 uh, and invest as well. Right. And it's not because the fund is pushing anything. It's just because people that invested in them use Visor. And so that's sort of like this win, win, win situation that we think would be super, super cool as we scale the, um, the company. Um, so in terms of like moving forward, so yeah, so we have, like I said, we have the loans that we're adding to project better um, better loans and stuff like that. Um, what, what, what do you mean loans? Are you talking about like in a syndication that the, the loan that the operator has, or are you talking about your personal loans? So but no, it's, it's personal loans. So I mean, Visor is built essentially again for everything not just the syndication investments. There are people who just use it for syndications, but essentially it's built for everything. And so if you, if you add any, everything, the ability to add in loans that you have, personal loans or, or, or commercial loans or mortgage loans or whatever type of loans you have needs to be added in a, in a, in a correct way and projected in an accurate way. And so we're perfecting that at the moment because it, it's not good enough. So that's like a really important aspect that we're launching like next week. Um, and then the next, the next sort of on our next, I'd say, um, take on our, on our miles on our roadmap is, um, uh, is the benchmarking side of it. And during those processes and the benchmarking might take some time, like a few more weeks. Um, but during that, we're also going to add more like small fine tune fixes and bugs and tiny features we need to add. Um, and then after that, there's still sort of, we're still iterating, like ideating, like what would be the most important aspect moving forward? Because we have a bunch of stuff we want to add. Um, for example, I want to be able to invite my CPA to log into Visor and prepare my tax return on his own. I don't want, I don't want to have to send any documents because everything's here. Why do I have to go and work hard? If I'll just invite my CPA, log into Visor and just take whatever you want or click a button and send him whatever he needs. Um, and, and the whole thing with, uh, down the road, sort of taxes, the things we want, we want to also add in and, um, 
creates you know your document repository and we also have a mobile, we also have a mobile app by the way um i don't know if you if you download or check it out we have a mobile app so you can sort of it, it it's a it's a it's a lot more um simple in terms of like what functionality you can do with it like the idea is that you're going to get the work done here but you can see your situation you'll get notifications about your finances as they come about in your in your pocket um and so there's that um we also want to add in more integrations to banks and other investor portals down the road um and and th there's a lot there are a lot there's a lot of things that we, we're planning to, to sort of add on top of all this and, and because we were like really focused on the private markets there are aspects of the public markets we also want to add more value on so like you can add in your robin hood td ameritrade or any brokerage account the breakdown and analysis of that account isn't uh, isn't at the is, isn't where we want it to be and we want to improve that drastically and also the ability to add single stocks and all that stuff as well so there's again there's a lot of there's a lot of work to be done and, and we're prioritizing what we feel the community would would value most do you have is there a place to enter in like um your life insurance cash values and all that stuff so no but you can like again you can add in other stuff so um oh other okay so I mean, I, I, life insurance can be a long-term savings. Um, you can define it as ever you want. Um, it, it depends, like what attributes you need from it. The whole insurance side of the finances is, is also something we're adding down the road. Um, we haven't reached that yet. So the goal the goal is to have this be one place to manage all of your financial stuff, assets, liabilities, all that. Everything, yeah. That's that's the goal, and the, I mean it's a it's it's a it's a process to reach it because it, it's a very complex product, and when you build a startup or any piece of software, you need to be laser focused on the value proposition you want to bring to the table, and then build out from there. And so we feel that our core value proposition is around the private markets, specifically specifically a real estate private equity, um, and we still have all the capabilities for everything else, but we need to sort of expand on uh deepening the the expertise in each each asset class and category like for example these asset classes don't mean the same to everyone um in the platform like some people might define something as a private loans others might define it as real estate or anything like that and so we're, we want to we want to sort of change that up and add it as maybe a tagging system or some other way to classify anyone can classify their own asset classes and then link specific assets to each asset class um, and be a lot more flexible. Um, and, and so there's there's yeah, so that's that that's an important uh, aspect that we're also working towards. So if someone can't find a place to put something, they just put it in the spot that makes the most sense. Yeah, or they can just like we're, we're really attentive. So we have this intercom button here on the bottom right. And we're really we, like we're really responsive. Our team can answer any question that comes up. So, like that's a great example, right? I have this investment. Which asset class or category should I put it in? And then we'll try to help you walk you through that process. Maybe hop on a Zoom call, or or, or just chat with you through this um, to to get you set up. And again, if you want to do it on your own, you can. But you can also just throw it at us and just forward an email or magic box it or whatever whatever works or you can both go just go through the manual approach like you do excellent and what's the uh can you talk about the what, what's the cost um after the 30 days yeah so um the way it works is that when when you sign up you let me go out All right so you sign you sign up um for free and then when you want to start adding your own information, the magic box it and syncing in accounts and adding in from adding, adding all that type of stuff, you have to put in a credit card to start the trial period. The trial is 30 days. Then you can choose between one of two plans. One plan is $950 a year. Um, for LFI or for infielders, there's a 15% discount on that. Um, or a hundred dollars a month, and there's a 15 percent discount on that as well. And then you have 30 days free to try it out. And we really believe that if you don't receive value from it, you shouldn't pay. So even if after you've done with the trial and we've charged your card and you started to pay, 
we have a 90 day money back guarantee. So like, if you're not happy with it or you want your money back, like we, we do not want unhappy people using Visor. If you're not happy, if you don't get the value, we'll give you your money back. Um, and, and if I'm going to send you Excel spreadsheets or documents um, in the magic box, especially just starting out, um, what kind of preparation do I need to, do I need to make them pretty and make them make sense? Or do I just dump it all to you guys and you guys figure it out? Again, like whatever the, 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 the AI doesn't, doesn't hand, won't handle, then we'll just, we'll handle it on our own. And so we've dealt with really complex stuff. I mean, I think about it again, like as a family office, like a family office, that's what they do, right? They, they, they're used to dealing with really complex stuff. And I have a really high, like high expert team that, that is really, really good at doing that stuff. Um, and again, everything is like super secure and private. So they don't have access to any of the personal information anyway. And so, um, yeah, Ryan Steg. Yeah, you see uh, the question there? Yeah, so is there a way to change the asset class of Magic Box we actually entered it into the wrong asset class? Yeah, so the, the, at, at the moment, the best way to do that is just to reach out to us and we'll do it from the back end for you. Um, that's like another one of those bugs that we need to, we need to add in the functionality to so be able to choose a different asset class. The problem changing asset classes in the front end, like from the platform itself, is that each asset class has different fields, different attributes. And so a real estate syndication has a different attribute than a managed fund or private equity fund. And so in order for that to happen at the moment, we need to do the manual behind the scenes. So you just drop us a message, um, either email or in the intercom, like the, the button on the bottom right, and we'll just do it for you. Yeah, I got another question. Um, how many users do they have? And um, can you download your info into Excel? Yeah, so yeah, we have a little more than a thousand users. Um, and you can export your information. Um, so... First of all, you can generate a report, either a balance sheet. You can see my screen, right, Jim? Yes. Um, so you can download a balance sheet for a specific date, and if it's all the entities or only one entity. And then when you download that, that'll be um, a, a PDF. Or you can just download a general report, which will be a spreadsheet um, of everything you have in the platform. And so you can export your data. See, I said data. Um, you can export your data um, whenever you want or generate reports. And we, again, this is also a section that's getting um, more robust as we move forward. Okay. Yeah, I think that's one of the um, concerns with any of these um, products. Even when we tried to build our own for LFI, you know, one of the first things I wanted to make sure is all the data can be downloaded um, in case someone wants to move on to, to something else, right? And that, because it takes so much time and effort uh, to get all this in and get it all calibrated uh, correctly, regardless of whether you're using Visor or your Excel spreadsheets or, uh, well, there aren't any other solutions, but if someone comes up with a different solution. So I think part of it, the safety, it's critical to have it so you can download and take your data with you if you decide that you're going to go with a different option. Um, so I, I think that's that's super important. Yeah, it is. Um, and then we understand that, right? Because you, if you go through the whole process, which can be very overwhelming of, adding all your information to one place. You want to make sure that it's, it's freaking secure and private. That's number one. Like what, this might sound like a cliche, right? But we're all military people. And so like for us, security and privacy is like the most important aspect of, of anything we build. And then after that, it's the ability to, if I want to extract my information for any reason, um, I need to be able to do that with a click of a button. And so that's also super important. In addition to like getting value, the visibility side, reporting side, projection, like that, that's, that's all important, but those two aspects are actually more important. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because I think one of the only requests that you guys refused was when I was trying to um, make the login easier, right? You're doing the two factor. And I said, well, can the two factor last for like a day or something? You guys are like, nope, not compromising on security. So you'll do any of my crazy ideas except make it less secure. So that's a good thing. We, we, we pay hackers to try and hack us. Um, and then if they find vulnerabilities, we'll fix those. And there's one thing we do want to fix or add in terms of the login, because we've, we've gotten that request from many people. 
and we think I understand where it's coming from, but we're, like I say, yeah, it's, it's not we're not going to compromise security. But we we are what we will probably do is add in the ability to log in with Google, because apparently Google login is as secure as two factor authentication because your email is should be as secure as that as well. And so we'll add the ability for people to log in with their Gmail account, their Google account, which should help streamline the process um, as well. Yeah, and, and to be honest, the, the two factor is pretty um pretty harmless. You just go to your email and, and copy paste. It's been it, it's been easy, but you know, I like to complain Jimmy, about the Jimmy, you know, people have asked us to go the other way. Like people have asked us to do three factor. Like oh God. I want you to, I want an email and a text and, and a text message, or I want the Google Authenticator app in order to log in. Um, so I mean it goes both ways. I think at the moment the two factor via email is like a it's it's good enough. It's really super secure, but we will add more measures as we move forward. I think if people want that additional security, we'll but we'll, we'll enable them to have that as well. Okay, and then did did I see a place for like precious metals and collectibles and stuff like that? Yeah, you did. All right. So okay, um, if I go here into the add manual, and then other, and then there's collectibles, oh, precious I see. metals, vehicles, um, and everything like that. All right, perfect. Are there um, anything else that you, you want to cover before we, uh, I don't know if there's questions from people. I, we, we have the, you can unmute and ask a question or you can type it into the chat, whatever you want. It was either super clear or super confusing. <laughs> I, no, I think one. that, yeah, it, it's one of these things where you really just have to get into it because to be honest, it does look overwhelming when you look at it. But, you know, I've been in it uh, for six months and, and it's really great. I have, you know, the, the thing is there's so much there that it takes a while to really dig in. And like some of the features you were showing today, were awesome. Like by asset class, you can view stuff. And, and I didn't realize a lot of that stuff. So I think, um, you know, having these webinars just to keep showing the features and, and updates is, is great. It's uh, really helpful for me at least. Yeah, I mean, listen, if, I, if we can give back to this amazing community that's helped us as well, um, build a better product, like I'll do whatever, whatever, whatever we can. Um, that's also why you guys have the special discount and, and, and why I'm getting on these calls, because I, I really value this feedback. It helps a lot. Well, we appreciate that. And, and you know, I am sincere when I when I'm, I'm just constantly surprised in a positive way about, uh, you know, the suggestions we, we give out of our community. And then, you know, a couple of days later, you see it show up in the uh, in the application. So that's awesome. Um, here's a question from Rant. Any way to rate and follow investments and sponsors? Um, so I think that means like a sponsor review tool. Yeah. So the benchmarking I mentioned, sort of like seeing where other people have invested in each fund or each sponsor, how many people are invested in each, how much money is sort of the beginning of that, of the ranking side. We want to add in also the ability to manually rank that's a little more complicated because you really need to make sure like you don't get a situation where like Yelp or Google reviews where it's totally contaminated, contaminated by bad, yeah. like unreal stuff. But there's another site, I think CrowdDD, um, try to do something like that. Um, and, and essentially just anyone can log in and rate uh, and rank a uh, sponsor. I guess we can do it based on if you invested in that sponsor, then you could rank them. Yeah. But we're not, that, that'll, that'll definitely be part of it. Um, but I don't understand what do you mean by follow investments and sponsors? Like in, in what way? That I'm not sure. I know that we are uh, at left field. We're also working on kind of a, uh, a sponsor review tool where you'll be able to give five stars and, and that'll be in, inside of our infield community where, you know, people can go in and comment and talk about sponsors and give them a rating. Um, I think maybe Rant, if you want to unmute and, and tell us more specifically what you mean, or he's just saying, um, the rate and follow, basically, like you said, give five stars or three stars to a particular investment and or sponsor. Right. My guess. And I, think, I, mean, I, think, I think I told you this on, on one of our calls as well. It's sort of like, so we've had sponsors reach out to us um, and ask us to sort of maybe push their deals to the community. Um, we haven't done that yet, although we've had members reach out and ask for deal flow. And so we're trying to find a way to bring win-win situations there. Um, and that might be sort of down the, the route of sort of following investments or sponsors. So like maybe if you 
decide you want to follow Mad Capital and Ashcroft and MLG and whatever. And then if you follow them, then basically you subscribe to their deal flow. That might be something interesting. I don't know if that, that's what you meant, but that might be a good idea um, for us to explore. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll wait here for a second. If there's any other questions, you can unmute or uh, put it in the chat. Otherwise, I know it's nighttime in uh, in Israel, so we'll uh, we'll let you go spend time with your family or go to sleep. <laughs> I have another call in 15 minutes. So it's oh, of course. <laughs> there's Chad. Hey, hey, hey Ledon. Good to see you again. I, I just wanted to thank you for the continued partnership with Left Field as well. Uh, interviewed Danielle yesterday for our podcast, which was great. So looking forward to be able to share that as well. She talked a lot about what you guys have uh, for the future that we hope the community will enjoy and get something out of also. But just want to thank you again for, for all the support you've given us and allowing us to get engaged with the development of the tool that you guys are building, because I think it's pretty slick. So thank Thanks you for that. that. Sure, for sure. All right, guys. So, I mean, I'm, I'm available. If anyone wants to reach out, I'm litan at advisor.co. Um, like if you guys have any questions, I'll put my, uh, email here in the chat, um, and you can reach out. Happy to help. Thank you so much for having me, Jim, awesome. Chad. We'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, yeah. Litan. Take care. And thank you everybody for joining. All right, guys. Bye. Yeah.